Hi again everyone. As mentioned at the end of my previous video, we're going to have a look at the defensive side of this goal here. So just as a refresher, I'll let the goal play through and I'll go into the analysis after that. Väcker inte lika mycket känslor, tyvärr kanske får man väl säga då på nu för tiden. Sundstedt då som sätter, ja han mål för tredje matchen i rad, hans tre första mål för säsongen. So I thought it was worthwhile to make a separate video looking at the defense just because it's a little bit different to most of the other defenses that I've looked at in other videos. In the other clips that I've looked at, a lot of it comes down to the defensive team not being aware of their defensive responsibility and someone getting free that way because they were either watching the ball or there was confusion as to who was responsible for who. This is not the case in this clip. Because of the man-on-man -man system that they're playing, we can't say that the white team is not aware of who their responsibility is. Just looking at the scene here, you can see that everyone is pretty much aware of who they are with. So, what happened? Well, there's a couple of things, but the first and foremost is that this player here did not stay between his player and the net. Good rule of thumb for most players when defending is to always stay between the player you are responsible for and your own net. And this is where this player fell down. You can see if we draw a line between his defensive responsibility and his own net, he's not on that line. Whereas if we have a look at all of the other players, they are between the play that they are taking care of and the net. And what happens is that this red player, number 66 here, that the white player is supposed to be marking, drifts further and further up the court until that white player is punished for their positional error and then they are unable to stop that red player from advancing to the white team's net. You can see here now that the red player has drifted a few steps, they have a completely unimpeded path to the white team's net. This player here needs to block that path to the net. So I'll move it through a little bit further. And as of right now, you can see that this player has lost their defensive responsibility. They still know who they are, but they haven't done what is required to take care of them. So we'll move it through a little bit further. Okay, if this player had stayed between his player and the net, he'd be somewhere around here. From here, he'd be able to block the path to the net and probably push this guy to the outside. But he definitely would not be able to take this path straight in through here and create that two-on-one. It would still be a two-on-two -two at the white team's net. The second thing which I think the white team could have improved has to do with this player here. This is only a minor detail. I'm not certain whether this would have prevented the red team from advancing the ball into the middle, but it may have helped prevent it in some way. And what that is, is that this white player allows this red player to move the ball out from the back of the net on his forehand side, which makes it infinitely easier for this player to make a nice, clean pass. If we have a look as we move it through, the white player pretty much takes a route like this, which this red player just goes with and comes out on his forehand side because you can see here that the red player is a left-handed shot. He has the ball on his forehand when it's on the left-hand side of his body. So as we move it through, just have a look 
as to this player taking that route. And the red player says, thank you, I'll come out on this side. And now he's on his forehand with a bit of speed and he's able to make the pass. If we take it back to where this started, I would have preferred to see this player come to this side of the net and push the red player out on this side because it means the red player is going to be on their back end, which is a lot more awkward than running forwards with the ball on your forehand. It also makes it more difficult for the ball carrier to execute a clean and precise pass. So this white player here, they could have steered the red player out on their backhand side. The other thing they could have done is they could have been a little bit deeper. So right here, it's easy for this red player to pick a side and essentially be able to, to beat this guy with a pass on either side. However, if they hung back another meter or two to be somewhere probably around this area here, then they would have a little bit more time to read the pass that was being made by the red player and they'd have a better chance of intercepting it. So they're the only two things I really want to say about the defense. Um, the main one being that this player here should have stayed between uh, his player and the net and that this player here could have steered the red player with the ball a little bit better so that it wasn't so easy to pass it into the space that's in the center of the court. So let me know your thoughts. I'd love to hear if you think the white team should have made any other adjustments. If you have any specific goals or situations that you'd like to see analyzed, please leave those in the comments as well. Also, if you know anyone that would enjoy this type of video, please feel free to share it. But thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next video. Väcker inte lika mycket känslor, tyvärr kanske får man väl säga då på nu för tiden. Sundstedt då som sätter, ja han mål för tredje matchen i rad, hans tre första mål för säsongen.